Hey, be tender. Just the usual? Yeah. More honey, please. Sorry, sir. We're all out. Out of honey? That's unbelievable. Looks like I've got to get to work. You're retired. Are you here to drink honey or solve some mystery? We're all out of honey, aren't we? I had to start digging deep. Truth be told, the honey wasn't disappearing all on its own, but the bees were going along with it. I narrowed the missing bees down to a few species, American bumblebee and the rusty patch bee. But there was one bee in particular whose disappearance is affecting all of us. The honeybee is responsible for 80% of the pollination of plants in the world, while also producing the honey that I love. However, this is a problem now, since 90% of the bees have deceased since 1962. We see that the major culprit for this is pesticides. Pesticides are meant to take out invasive species. As you look at the data, not only does it do that, but it also takes out our precious pollinators as well. <coughs> we also see that several large chemical corporations shrug their shoulders at such important events, as with the blood on their hands. These same corporations decide to refuse to have a pesticide policy change and sell these horrible chemicals to farmers, where it's unfortunately profitable. We can also see that climate change is also a cause of recent casualties in recent years. We see that shifting temperatures causes a mismatch in pollination, which harms the bees. We can also see that today, 30% of honeybee colonies are lost every single winter which that's double that of the historic loss, which is only about 10 to 15%. So with all these losses, we need to have a plan B. We need to come together as a community and save the bees. And we as a population need to do it fast. That's why I'm making a beeline to raw bees honey so I can speak to Eric Robertson about the urgency of bee endangerment. Truth be told guys, I'm I've hit a dead end. I know the bees are dying, but what do we lose without the bees? We're gonna lose about a third of uh, all the fruits and vegetables on the table. Apples, cherries, uh, blueberries, blackberries, um, almonds, oranges. I mean, the list goes on and on. So one of the best things you can do to promote local bees and local bee health would be just plant wildflowers. People think they're uh, noxious weed, but that is one of the first nectar sources and pollen sources for your honeybees in the, in the spring. So I think that would be that, and, and buy local. While donating to bee farms has been made easy by doing it online, there are plenty of other ways you can ensure the safety of the honeybee. While there are several responsible beekeepers, like Eric who we just spoke with, there are plenty of others who aren't responsible and harvest the honey of the honeybee before winter and place another unhealthy sugary product in its place for the bees to consume during the winter. Get this out of your mouth. Come on. A little research can go a long way before purchasing your honey, and you can help stop contributing to this harmful practice. And I can't encourage you enough to buy local. Putting a bee bath outside your home with a bowl of water is a great place for bees to rest and rehydrate. However, make sure to use a small dish, since our pollinators, well, they aren't great swimmers. As I mentioned before, the reduction of pesticide use is essential for the honeybee survival. So buy local organic produce and stray away from using pesticides in your own local garden. Together, we can turn the page on chemical cultivation and be the change you want to see. So there it was. I found the solution to saving the honeybees. And the honey was back. The once black and white honey bar, void of my favorite sweet treat, well, it now had some color to it, and the people were having a good time once again. However, I can't join them yet, as there's still work that needs to be done. There still needs to be met. The bees need.